still stands. Okay, uh, so we're going to just follow what they did. The obviously did something wrong, because that's what this problem is about, finding their mistake. And so that's what we'll do. So the next thing that we see them do, so we've got 10 times m over 10 equals 20 times 50 over 20. So what we're noticing is m over 10, that's, that's still part of it, that didn't, didn't change. So I guess what they did, decided to do is multiply by 10 here, and then we still see 50 over 20, and we decided to multiply by 20. They just, they just violated the cardinal rule of algebra, right? Which is what? Do you multiply on both sides? You do the same thing on both sides, or do you do something, do it the same on both sides? Um, well, I can't multiply by 10 on one side and 20 on the other. What would you choose? Are, you know, are 20 or 10 good ideas, babe? Uh, I don't, I think 10 is better. But also, uh -huh. the way that I would do this problem, I would do 10. So if you had 10 and you got 20, what would you do to the 10 and the 20? Uh -huh. Times 2, 50. and then you do n times 2, mm -hmm. and then um, what's 50 times 2 is 100. So you think M is 100? Yes. Okay. Well, you said if you were to choose to multiply by 10 or 20, you would multiply by 10. Let's see what happens if we do that. This is obviously no good. We got M over 10 equals 50 over 20. We multiply by 10. What is multiplying a fraction with a denominator of 10? If we multiply it by 10, what happens? It cancels out. Cancels out. Hold on, though. Don't let me forget to thank you for participating. Uh, it cancels out. We have m equals 50 over, oh sorry, multiply by 10. Cancels that out. We're left with uh, let's see, here's the 2. 2 divides 50, leaving 25. So, I've written too much. And M is 25, not 100. Okay. Now, some proportions work well for that, that kind of thinking. I can just say, like, um, 10 times 2 is 20, right? So this times 2 has to give me 50, not 50 times 2. Or, or if we go to the other way, 20 divided by 2 is 10, so 50 divided by 2 is 25. Now, my point there would be, that's kind of the, just trying so to see it. my equation was right, not, like, I just... Thinking was right, but you got a little bit mixed up. Yeah. You're trying to do, I think, too much in your head. Um, so, maybe on another day, when the, the humidity is a little lower and the temperature is a little higher and the brain is different, you, you would get 25. Yes. But I would say it's more consistent, it's more um, reliable to um, do it algebraically. You know, do the same thing to both sides, try to cancel everything out that's not M and leave M by itself. And as long as we do that correctly, we get M equals 25. We try to do too much in our heads, maybe. If we'll get it right, maybe we'll get it wrong. Um, next, we yeah. have um, uh, Okay, so it says t is 2, 21, as 40 is 2, 28. Oh, the other thing is, not all proportions work well that way. Not all like denominators are multiplied, multiples of the other denominator on the other side of the proportion. That worked nicely, but it's not going to work nicely all the time. So t is to 21. Does that what does that mean? T over 21. T over 21. There's a ratio of t things to 21 things. Thank you. Uh, is the same as 40 is to 28. Okay. I'm not sure, you, might, you might be tempted to put the, the larger number in the denominator, but that's not what this says. Make sure you get in the correct way. 
is the T is the 21 S, 40 is the 28. See, I can't say 21 times something is 28, or at least I can't do it easily. It's obviously 21 times 10 fraction. And actually what we, we wind up doing in, in solving the proportion in the way that we've, we've learned is we're kind of figuring that out exactly. We're figuring out what, what M is, or we're trying to figure out what you know, 21 times what is 28, uh, just not as directly as So we want to get T by itself. How do we get T by itself? How do we cancel out things that are not T? Uh, you times that 21, 21. 21. So we get t by itself, and then whatever is over here, that's what it is. This and this have a factor of 7. This is 4, this is 3. 4 and 40 have a common factor of 4. So t is 30. Yeah, so, uh, um, I know there was a valid reason, but I can't really remember what it was that we don't, we're not using cross multiplication and just like okay. division on that side. Thank you have a picture? Yes, babe? I was also wondering why sometimes the way that I said works and sometimes it doesn't. Because what you do to the denominator, that's Well, in concept, it always works. In practice, I'm just saying, not that it doesn't work, but it's difficult. Yeah. To figure out what do I multiply 21 by to get 28, and then just take take whatever that is and multiply, like figure. Oh, so it still works. It's right. Just harder. The idea works definitely. Oh. Yeah. The idea is still the same always. It's just harder. This is really easy. It's times two. Yeah. Yeah. Times yeah. Two. But what is that number they multiply? I don't know. It's, I mean, yeah. It's it's just harder. I don't. I I have a tendency to just go on and on. Okay, so Dimitri asked, brought it, brought it on the class that uh, why don't we think, why don't we use cross multiplication? Not that you can't, not that it will be wrong. Of course, it'll be correct. But to me, it's just a my professional opinion, and it's nothing more than that. Uh, but I, I think that should carry some some weight. It's a magic trick. Cross multiplication is a magic trick that I would say, like, if that is your standard uh, approach to a proportion, 90% of the people who just use that as their standard approach treat it like a magic trick. They don't know why it works. Okay? That's dangerous territory. And then your foundation for the rest of like anything else that's built on top of solving proportions, it's really shaky. It's got a shaky foundation down here because it's, it's built on a magic trick I don't even understand. Now, if we keep in mind what's really going on, now we understand the magic trick, and it's not such a bad idea. Okay, so cross multiplication would look like this. 28 times t equals 21 times 40. Remember, 21 times 40 is? 840. 840, thank you very much. Who's that? Thank you. Still helping me out. What's up, that's well, that was cooking. Really stop it. That was good. Uh, and then divide by 28 and t obviously we 30. So why can we transition from this to this? There definitely is a mathematical reason why we can, but if we don't know it, then what we, what we start to do is to not remember things as well and it starts to mess with our mathematics. Let me show you what cross multiplication really is and how it's kind of more work than what we did over here. Here we just multiply by one thing on both sides. This is some cancellation, t was 30. And this is one more step. So what's really happening? Are we, are we really just multiplying 28 times t? No. Not really, not mathematically. What we're doing is we're multiplying by 28 on both sides because it cancels out the denominator. So there's our 28 times t. We're also multiplying by 21 on both sides because it cancels out that denominator. And there's our 21 times 40. That's what's really happening. Because there is no mathematical, it's not a mathematical practice, just take the denominator of one side and multiply it by some other thing on the other, so that's not in keeping with do the same thing to both sides. So, like I said, it's a magic trick you don't understand. Imagine a magician who did tricks, he, did, he didn't even know how they worked. He's kind of a lame magician, right? Or a real magician. Huh? Or a real magician. 
was was tragic. tragic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just have this talisman I mean, and I don't know how it works. David Copperfield. But that's a dangerous I magician because that. you can like get somebody okay. close. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to float a saw blade. I'm gonna try. I want to saw somebody through a box. Really the dangerous magician. Just give him a shot. All right. So. This is about the government. So the House of Representatives, there's 435 representatives. How does the state get representatives? We vote for them. We vote for them. But how, how, do we just, how does it get decided how many each they get? They count the like their population. Oh, population. population. Yes. How many does, uh, how many representatives does Montana have? Like two. Two. A the one like that four. 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 The one four. that nobody four. cares about. Like two. One. Two. Two. Do you know how many? Electoral votes we get? Two. One. One. Three. You tell me. Oh, we get three. You tell me. Do you know how? So those, the electoral votes we get is the sum of the senators and the representatives that we have. You get two things, senators and representatives. Every state gets how many senators? Two. Two. Every state gets two. And then you get representatives on top of that based on your population. It's just one. So if we have two senators and we have three electoral votes, we have, we have one representative. Like we have so few people, we have one representative. That's amazing. I like that. Whereas states like California have like five, like have fifty-three. Eight. Eight. Actually, three electoral votes. Oh my God. So, I mean, they say have fifty-one. Well, they have fifty-five electoral votes. Oh, fifty-five electoral votes. Fifty-three. Fifty-three representatives, two senators. That's fifty-three. The state of Montana has about a million people. Woo! It's the fourth largest state by. Surface area, Woo. and like way down there by population. By contrast, San Diego, where I used to live, has over four million people just in San Diego. Oh my god. Okay, so take take the population of Montana, quadruple it, quadruple it, and put it in a, a city. It's a big city. It covers a lot of area, but so four million people. That's very dense. How does it feel uh, going from somewhere like that to somewhere like this? It's really good. <laughs> yeah. So, from Kentucky, Kentucky has six representatives. Kentucky, they have six times more representatives. What you do, man? So they have six representatives, and altogether, the whole uh, House of Representatives has 435. So they just ask for the ratio of Kentucky representatives to all representatives. What's the ratio? Uh, Kentucky to uh, six to four hundred thirty-five. 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 That's it. I mean, if they had some common factors, we could simplify it a little bit. The only factors of six are two and three. Oh, wow. This is not divisible by two, is it divisible by three? Yeah. yeah. What is it? It's one or 145. What's that? 145. 145. So two and 145. Are you a math? Well, oh, geez. Yes. Okay. To kind of put it in perspective, to, to, to know what this ratio means. It means that for every two Kentucky representatives, there are 145 representatives from the entire body. One thing to keep in mind, though, is of the 145, let, let's go back to this one, this makes more sense. Of the 435, oh, wait. six of them are the Kentucky representatives. Okay. Kentucky. What's that? I put that as my answer, the six. Okay. That's fine. That's the same, they're equal, right? Um, they're the same. Okay, so I got that. Um, so, so some of that 435 is actually, there's six in in this group as well. Can we look at the ratio of Kentucky representatives to non-Kentucky representatives? Yeah. Sure, it's what would that be? That would be 429 six, 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 to 429. Wow. Wow. Well, no, I was thinking like non No. No, you were right. No, I was thinking Can we look at the ratio of Kentucky representatives to Montana representatives? Our representatives are one senators or two. That's how we have three electoral votes. 
So, but what, what is the answer to this? Or this? Preferably this, just because it'd be nice if you got in the habit of, of simplifying your functions, just as a general rule. Yeah. Can we like bump it up and say, like, add more representatives on, like, and have, like, or on Earth, 870 and then have, like, 12? 12. 12, 12 to 870? No. It would be an equivalent ratio. It would be misleading information because there aren't even 12 exactly representatives. Unless we're talking about like some alternate universe where there's also six, there's also a state called Kentucky and there's also six representatives from that state called Kentucky. Uh, but other than that, no, yes, the ratio would be the same. The information conveyed would be a little misleading, but it would be equal. Okay. Well. That was the last one from that section. So we're going to move on. 3.6. Uh, 14. 3.6. over. D plus 13. 6 over D minus 13. Okay. Um, we want to solve for D. Keep that in mind. As silly as that might sound, keep in mind we're always trying to solve for the unknown value. Whatever it is, that's whatever we do, we're, that's our goal. That's the, um, can we do cross that? Sure. It's correct, isn't it? Yeah. It is correct. Careful that it's not bad. Oh, I'll go back and I'll show you, you know, what, what's actually going on. But we won't at first. It's real bad. Let's go ahead and move this over. It's actually the opposite. That's why I don't like it. Math is not magical. It is very precise. Is this your magical? And explain mathematician. Exactly. Uh, oh, wait. That was supposed to be plus 13 and minus 13. That was bad. It's not very good. You're a mathematician. I like that. No, he's a math warlock. <laughs> okay, so we're solving for D still, Destiny. Uh, distributive property. Six times thirteen. Um, Seventy-eight. Yeah. Okay. Eighteen <laughs> D minus. Okay, I don't know about this one. Hey, I've got this on three. Three hundred and thirty-four. Two hundred and thirty-four. Two hundred and thirty-four. Sixty. Six B equals uh, negative three hundred. What's that? Negative three hundred and two. No, not three. Twelve. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, negative three twelve. Yeah, yeah. So uh, negative minus more negative. Uh, oh, sorry. Plus eighteen D. Next. Take 6D from each side. Take 6D from both sides. Take 6D from each side. So what do we have in here? We have negative 312 plus 12D equals what? What's 6D minus 6D? What's 5 minus 5? 0. 10 minus 10. 12 minus 12. Negative 5 minus negative 5. Still 0. What's 60 minus 60? Zero. 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 What happens when you take something away from itself? Zero. 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 And zero D. Now what? Who's that raising my hand? Dimitri? It's minus, or take 12 D from each side. Okay. Minus 12 D. Minus 12 D. Negative 12 D. Equals negative 312. Forget in there. Divide. Right, uh, negative 12, negative 12. Oh, there we are. And D equals... What? 26. 26. Is that what I heard? Yes. 26. Okay. I would, I would submit to you, and a lot of back and forth went on, like, more steps than necessary. Uh, once we subtract the 78, I would have said at this point subtract 18 from both sides. Big thumbs up. Right? Subtract 
18 from both 18 d from both sides because what happened is you subtracted d 6 d from both sides got zero over here and then just subtracted 12 d back over here. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So not wrong, but more steps than uh, it could take fewer steps. Could take fewer steps. Let me just really quick jump back up here. Now, if I multiply this side by d plus 13, what happens when I multiply this by d plus 13? That's right. Even though it is looking kind of complicated, d plus 13 is the denominator. If I multiply a fraction by its own denominator, it cancels out. The denominator cancels out. Uh, so I need to multiply this side by d plus 13. I can't do that. What, if, what happens if I multiply this side by d minus 13? Um, right. I, I can squeeze this guy in. It doesn't, I'm multiplying three numbers together. This one, and this one, and this one. Any order that I do that, it doesn't matter. Two times three times five, two times five times three. Like It doesn't matter what order you multiply. So cancel, and d minus 13. Yes, that's could you also um, times it by 1 over 18? Well, absolutely you can do whatever you want to both sides. Let's see what happens. Let's grab this. So Hudson says, let's multiply by 1 over 18 and cancel out this 18, right? right. 1 over 18. And uh, that happens to cancel out the 6 as well, right? That leaves a 3 here. All right, so on the left side, what do we have? You have 1 over 6 1 over d, is d plus 13. Don't forget. A d plus 13 in the denominator, multiplying and canceling out the numerator doesn't magically make d plus 13 in the numerator. And on this side, what do we get? We get a 1, one over, over 1, d minus over 13. d minus 13 times 3. Uh, yeah. Okay. 3d. Now it's kind of tricky to solve. Now that it's all in the denominator. But let me point something out. When we're solving proportions, there's also a handy little trick. We have the, the variables in the denominator. Okay. And it's and it, not a trick. Uh, let me point out, like, is uh, 9 fifteenths, what's that equal to? 18 thirtieths. Or let's go the other way. It gets smaller. 3 fifths. 3 fifths. They're the same, right? Mm -hmm. 9 fifteenths equals 3 fifths. Yeah. All right. All on board? Yeah. Sure? Nobody needs a minute to, to adjust to that? <laughs> okay, so 9 15 equals 3 fifths. So does 15 over 9? Yes. Would that always be true? Yeah. Yes. Yes. If two fractions equal each other, they're reciprocal. What? You're hot. I can write you a pass and make sure it's the office. Um, are you paying attention? Great. So here we have 1 over d plus d 13 equals 1 over 3 times d minus 13. What's the reciprocals, right? I take the reciprocals, set them equal to each other. It's kind of establishing a, a mathematical law here. What's the reciprocal of 1 over d plus 13? Plus 13 over 1. That's right. Do I need to write over 1? No. No. Nah. Nah. Redundant. And the reciprocal of 1 over 3 times d minus 13. Yeah, times d minus 13. Minus 13 over 1. There's an equation I can solve as well. I'll get the same thing for Oh, but I, that's cool. I'll get, what was it? 26. No. It was 26. It was 26. Uh, Six, 
So we saw that we'll get 26 as well, but I won't make you watch me do that. Uh, next was 26. this one. So we're going to approach it in a whole lot the same way. Let's say now we don't need to be reminded that cross multiplication is just multiplying both sides by both denominators. So we get 6 times w minus 10 equals negative 2 times 4 plus 2w. 6w minus 60 equals negative 80 minus 4w. Add 4w. Minus 68, and w equals 52, w equals 5. Boom. Mm -hmm. 33 recipes. Mm -hmm. So uh, 12 buttermilk biscuits from one recipe, also two cups. So to get, to get, 12 biscuits. Uh, biscuits, yes. And you need two cups of flour. You want to make 30 biscuits. 30 biscuits. So you need how many cups flour? Oh. Yes. You can do my trick on this board. Oh, how so? Um, so write two over 12. Two over 12. And then put F over 30. Flour over 30. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to take two times oh. 30 and divide No, 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 wait. This isn't set up. Maybe. No, never mind. Never mind. OK. Wait, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So I think what she's talking about is the thing that sub it kind of ties. So you take two times thirty divided by twelve, which equals five. Why? Good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, that's what I did. That's what I did. Whoa! Well, um, did you have something? Yeah. I thought you had your hand. You have a way to solve this equation. How so? Uh, cross product. Okay, cross product. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. 12F so equals 60, yeah. F equals 5. Oh, oh. Is that by 30 by 2. Oh, yeah. Right? Nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, what if I just want to get F by itself? Uh, multiply by, we take F times 12 equals to 2 times 30. I just did that right here. Yes? Yeah. See that cancels out that. Uh, oh, something happened here. I think. We got sixty twelve F. Whatever twelve is. Soybeans are upon us. Oh, I get it. So twelve and two. Oh, look at that. Inception. And 30 divided by 6. Oh, my God. Five. Bye five. bye, trailer. Is it going by itself? Don't get distracted. Thank you. Okay, and that does it. Let's go ahead and turn our homework, please. Here you go, guys. So, I'm not slow. Solving for x. I just want to get x by itself. Destiny. I like that idea. I think it's the least amount of work. If I cross multiply, then I have to divide. If I just multiply by 8, I get rid of everything that's on the side of x. x is already by itself. Simplify this. We got uh, the 4 goes into both, so 2 and 3. So 10 over 3, or 3 and 3. Oh. 
X is in the denominator. Now what? Oh. Wait. Wait, what's a what? What? Wait, what? I have a question. Yes. Um, they can put it in decimals, right? Yes. Okay, so what the, the decimals? Three point three or three. Okay. You better be put repeating. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's right. Thank you. I was Dylan, the recent rule of what? 7 over x. So multiply both sides by x over 7? Yeah. Okay. You have the same thing on both sides? Absolutely fine. So what do we get on the left side? 1. We get 1. The number 1. That's a stooge. That's good. 1. Non-trivial. <coughs> because you know what a lot of people put is like 0 or x or 7s. Let's see what let's see, let's look at what is happening over here. We have seven divided by seven. What, what is seven divided by seven? One. One. And we have x divided by x. What's x divided by x? One. So we have one times one over one times one is one. one. Not zero. That's probably the most common. Here we go. We have nine times x over thirteen times seven. That's thirteen times seven. It's like eighty-one. No. 90. Okay. Dylan. Hmm? What would you do? Oh. Uh. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> like one more step would do it. I did it. You did it? Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> divide by nine. Okay, divide by nine. <laughs> I'm going to multiply by one nine. I like it that way. Oh, okay, yeah. And the 9 cancels the 9. Very good. 1 9. So we're doing it in two steps. So what do we get now? Dummy. What do, what do we get now? Cross. Hi, dummy. Yeah, you. Oh, you did. I bet this is unique to you. Did you do an epic backflip? Cross product. Okay, that should be 1 <laughs> equals 9x. And then? Divide by 9. Divide by 9 on both sides? Yeah. Divide by 9. And we got there. Yeah. It's 100% correct. 10 point one what, what's the decimal of that? I don't know. 10.1 repeating. 10.1 repeating. 10.1 repeating. Yeah, it's 10.1 repeating. Yeah, um, yeah. Can we, so far that's the record for fewest number of steps. Can we beat this record? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Testing? It's awesome. Well, it's not where the 1 equals 9x over 9 one. This one? You could have multiplied by 91. 91 over 9? Or just 91? Just 91. Okay, just 91. Over 1. Multiply over by. Okay, let me back up. So you said take 9x over 91 equals 1. Multiply by 91. Multiply by 91. 91 equals 90x. Divide by 9, we get 91 over 9. Okay, so that is 1, 2, 3 steps. Can we break that record? Faith? Um, you can multiply um, 13 times 7 and 7 times 7, so you cross out the 7, and then you have x equals 9 over uh, like No. Okay. So where are you going? Are you going from, from the beginning? Yeah. From well, from the beginning. Okay, so yeah. 7 over x <laughs> equals 9 over 13. Yeah. Step 1 is? Um, step 1 is... Multiply 7 times 7 and 13 times 7. Like this? Both sides by 7? Yeah. So we get 7? Yeah, 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 yeah. 7 times 7 is 49. No, 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 not. Well, no, it would, no, you'd cross it out. It'd cross it out. Because it's division. You mean 1 times 7? It's division. What? So multiplying it by 7 would Bye. cancel out. Yeah, cancel it out. Are there multiply fractions? Because they're reciprocal. Yeah, they're reciprocal. So divide. I don't know. I just said taking seven to buy or seven. Let me, let me back it up. You said multiply seven by seven. Yeah, right? I I know. I meant so it's cross. You, you meant seven divided by yeah, seven. Divided yeah, seven divided. Yeah. So multiply by one seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There we go. That makes sense. Sevens cancel and nothing came up here. So on the right side we have nine over oh 90, that? ninety-one. Yeah. That equals what? What's on this side? Is it 1x? Yeah, it would be x, right? Because 1 times x is 
x. No, because it has to be 91 over 9. Over nine. Over nine. This is supposed to be 91 over 9? Yeah. It's not supposed How do we multiply fractions? Mm -hmm. Straight across. Straight across. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to multiply these, these straight across. 9 times 1? 9. 13 times 7? 91. Everyone's, I mean, by talking a lot, are, you, are we getting closer to understanding? No. No, I understand. So what's on this side? We have 1 times 1. That's the numerator. 1 times x. That's the denominator. Yes? Would you need the one? Would you have to keep it or would it just be like x equals? No. Like is it important? Yeah. So, so Morgan, you're asking, everybody stop talking. Gosh. It's not necessary. It's not helping. So Morgan's asking, is it important to keep this one? Like you're asking, is it just could we just say x? Yeah. Yeah, you could. No, you can. Wait. So one over x is the same as x. That's the question. No. One. Let's try it with a specific number. One over four. Is that the same as four? No. Four. So one mm -hmm. over x is not the same as x. Brent. No. Alan. Stop. Right. <coughs> so yes, it is important. Now, you may be confusing it with 4 over 1. Is that the same as 4? Yes. Yeah, because 4 divided by 4, or 4 divided by 1 is 4. But 1 divided by 4 is not 4. 1 divided into 4 pieces is not 4. But 4 divided into 1 piece is 4. So 1 over x is 9 over 91. That's it. You could, can you do like the reciprocal of both of them? So then you want to make it. So we could just say, if 1 over x equals 9 over 91, then x over 1 equals 91 over 9. Right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. That was uh, 1, uh, two. 2 steps. <laughs> um, can you also um, multiply by x at like, the way that you At the way beginning? Let's enter a, a blank page here. So 7 over x equals 9 over 13. 9 over 13? Thank you. Multiply by x. That's x divided by x is 1. So we have 7 on that side. Multiply by x over 1 on this side, we get 9x over 13. And then we have to minus the 7 on that side. <laughs> okay. I, it would make sense. Wait, I don't that. Really yes? I know how I get the answer, but I also don't know how I get the answer. I just get it. Like, because I'm getting everything right. Mm -hmm. It's just. So I just multiply 7 and 13, and then I have. So it'd be um, 91 over 9, so. Um, no, because I don't know. I just get the answer. I don't understand. I'm just kidding. How do you feel about that? No, I just. Okay, I want to help you out. No, but I'm confused, but not confused. So here's what I want to know. Here's what I want to know. Talking to Faith. Hands down. Eyes on me. Okay? I feel like this crowd is a lot younger than they actually are. It's good. Your minds are healthy and young. But I would like you to act a little older. Okay, we're all paying attention. Uh, you say, I don't know how to I do it. I'm getting the right answer. Are you wanting... To get the right answer, but also understand what you just did. Well, the way if you're okay with just always getting the right answer but not understanding it, yeah, then I can't help you. If you're but, just okay with it, but the way you guys do it just makes me more because what I do is I do seven times thirteen. Mm -hmm. I gotta divide by nine by it, and then I get ten point nine repeat, and I get ten point one for repeating. That's what this is all about. Yeah, that's what this is all about. Yeah. And Mr. Delay, by the way. And in the book. And the book. Because yeah. I copied them from the book. I didn't learn anything. I mean, cool. <laughs> no. The answer is no. They didn't. They may have taught you something that, well, at least a book is not teaching you to do it in a way that you don't know what happened. No, because in the book, this is how you're supposed to do it. 
you can see my notes I remember Mr. Selby saying, like, oh, yeah, you can do 7 times 13 divided by 9, and it'll give you your answer. But so why? I don't know. It just works. If you're okay with that, listen, guys. See, my notes. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying you're getting the wrong answer. You're getting the right answer. Am I right? You're getting the right answer? Yeah. I personally, if I said to myself, I just got the right answer, I don't know how, oh, well, I'm going to go play outside. Like, <laughs> that, the, the, listen, I'm not telling you that you can't do that. I'm not telling you that I'll mark you wrong on a test if you do it some way that you don't fully understand what I'm saying. From personal experience, my professional opinion, uh, it's not a good practice to solve equations in a way that you don't know how, but it just works. Because when we try to apply it to some other situation, or if doing it in some mystery way that you don't understand, Leaps, so like you're, here is maybe um, you're the line of learning. Here maybe you are, before you learn about proportions. And here is a person who can solve proportions. Okay? Now, I really think you should learn all of this stuff in between. Part of that is things like uh, the idea that if I take a fraction and I multiply it, by the denominator, mm -hmm. denominators cancel. Okay? Part of that is understanding that A times B, oh, excuse me, oh, that's not all I wanted. Just back. That A times B, A over B, times B over 1, is the same as B over B times A over 1. And the reason why this B cancels this B is it's because it's getting divided by B, and B divided by B is 1. And so that, that's why it leaves you with A. Now, another option. I will call on you. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, another option is, uh, what you're doing here is confusing me. And I'm not saying that this is, it could be something else. But here's just an example. This confuses me. I don't really get it. But I do know magical happens. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but here I am at the same place as somebody else is that did learn all that other stuff. <laughs> when we move on, Charms. this and other things will be needed to understand all of this stuff. If we bypass that knowledge with I don't know how I did it, we'll be in trouble. Okay? Now, maybe you're bypassing some knowledge that it doesn't seem like comes up, but at some point, in particular, this idea will come up at some point. And if you don't get that multiplying a fraction by its denominator cancels out the denominator, you're going to be hosed. You need to understand that. Okay? If you're okay with, I don't know how I do it, but I just do it because so and so, Selvig, uh, Zelay, guy that buys <laughs> it for sandwich for me every day at work, <laughs> told me how to do it, and now I can do it, but I don't know how. I, I can't make you not be okay with that. If you're okay with that, I can't, I can't change that. If you want to understand, I will do my darndest to help you understand why it all works. Is that our wrist? My darndest. What's that? I mean, that's okay. I, like that. oh. I will try my best. My, darndest. my hardest. Do everything that I can do to help you understand the things that I know are important to understand. Okay. Can I write an example I got out of the book about the boys who basically... How about you find it in my book? Okay. Wait, wait, then we can't see it. It's a fancy book. I, I, can, pull, I can pull it up. She's finally in the book. While she's doing that, let's go to the next question. Find the name, find the name. Oh my god. So just 
in case the, the, you got kind of lost there, at the very least, x is 91 over 9. x is 91 over 9. Alright, so, you can solve this equation for x. Yes? Multiply by x minus 8. I like it. Yeah, I don't have very much room. I'm just going to divide it. And x minus 8. So, again, if you multiply a fraction by its own denominator, the denominator divides itself and cancels out. So we're left with 12 equals. Uh, nothing really has any common factors here, so we have 9 times x minus 8. We will have to distribute that 9. Equals 5. Now what? Or, I mean, you have to deal with that 9. You have to treat it like a parenthesis. Uh, okay. Destiny. <laughs> Hudson. Sure. 12 equals 9x minus 72 over 5. Wait, what? <laughs> Just distribute the number. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. No, that's it. Canceling out that denominator again. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Like, what a minute if you just wrote this out? Do that. Like, not with the division line. Like, not with the fractions. Yeah. Like, add divided by 5 instead of Yeah. Because that baby just went to my mind and go for it. What are you saying? Right <laughs> now, like, the line that separates the 5 and the 9x minus 72. So instead of, so instead of saying 9x over 72 over 5, uh, it would just be like 9x um, minus 72 divided by 5. Like, oh. Not because you're dividing 5 by everything. Like you get parentheses and then. You get parentheses and write the division sign on the 5? I think so. Sure. All right. I know. I like that. You have 60 equals 9x minus 72. Add 72 to each side. Uh, that, 132? Yep. Yeah. 9x. 9. You don't do x equals. I did? No. Oh. <laughs> x equals. <laughs> Can we just simplify it a little bit? They at least have a factor of 3. I know, I got it. I don't know if it's divisible by 9 or not. It's 14.6 or 3. Um, okay. Six repeating. So how about divide one thirty-two by three? Forty-four, 44. 44 over five. Oh, All right. So the time has come. See? Hey. Please show some respect to the person who's talking. Trust the ground I stand on. All right. So, on page 160. Hey, I'm seriously, I'm asking you to listen to the person talking. Exactly what I would do. Yeah. Now, why would I multiply by 3? Because oh, yeah. it's really 30 over 1. 30 over 1. So that's 30 divided by 30. Now I have x times 1 over 1 times 1. That's really x over 1, but we just talked about how the x over 1 is x. Yeah. And on this side, 6 and 30, right? 30 divided by 6. No. no 30 divided by 6. 30 is in the numerator, 60 is in the numerator. No, 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 no. That's not what the book's showing. Whoa. It's showing you just you multiply, do it, by you multiply by 11. 30 times 11 
30 over 1, we multiply fractions straight across, straight across, and 330 divided by 6 is 5. 55. 55. <laughs> 55. See, that's what I was trying to say, but uh -huh. I don't have the smart words to say. <laughs> <laughs> smart words? Well, okay. I, I would imply that you're, that you're not smart. But the, yeah, well, so sorry. Smart words are, the first thing that happened was, we multiply both sides by 30. See, it's just weird because that side you're crossing it out, you're crossing, you're cross canceling, but that side is 30 times 11. But we could also, if we wanted, do the way that I originally was going to. We have 30 over 1 times 11 over 6 equals x over 30 times 30. Okay. And those cancel. Well, you can cancel this 30. Well, I can cancel a factor of six. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just guessing. Same thing I don't know. Same thing that could just sit in the sitting part of the seat. But everything's the same chart. You can sit anywhere. It's like spun. Anyway, there's a factor of six there. There's also a factor of six. 30 divided by, just like this is this cross canceling. Are you paying attention to me? Yes. Okay. This cross canceling is, is, is this, it's 30 divided by 30 is one. Over here we're doing the same thing. 30 divided by six is five. And what's five times 11? It's five. Now, the difference between this and the one we were talking about before is that it's like uh, 30 over x equals, what was I just, Lots of place. 30 over x. Good grief. There it is. 30 over x equals 6 over 11. Okay. Now, what I'm challenging you to do is find an example in the book where they unexplainedly, mysteriously do things that they don't understand. They, I mean, what I'm saying is they don't say, do multiply these numbers together because Ms. Selvig said so. Mr. Delay said so. Yeah, I know. So. I, wasn't, I didn't say that. I said I got from the book. But you did. I did. I copied it down. I got Otter Pops. Yeah, Otter Pops. Yeah. You're an Otter yeah. Pops. Yeah. I want to be your Pops. Wait, Pops. 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 I know what I This whole thing. I, I understand it's difficult when I can get the right answer. I'm not quite sure how, but it sure is nice to have a way that gets me the right answer. Um, what I would say is that in the book, find a, a, an equation that's set up like this, okay, with x in the denominator. So it's different from the one on 1, 6, and 3. Find one that just says, like the next step is take this number and multiply it by this number and divide it by this number with no explanation. That's my challenge to you. Find one that says that, and, and then we can discuss it by that. There's not, it's not there. It doesn't just say take the number multiply by that with no justification whatsoever. Um, yeah, Dimitri. Well, I know, you couldn't find one, but you could still do it mathematically. Like, uh, right. Oh. But my point is, the book's not telling you to do that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. They're right? Themselves the book, with the goal of teaching the, the truth behind all the stuff, it's not telling you to do that. And I won't tell you to do that. Not because of the book, but because it's just the best practice. I can't stop people, no matter how much I try for all the years that I teach, I can't stop them. I can't make them care why something works. I can't do it. It's impossible. I would have to change your will, and that's not something I can change without you wanting me to. Okay. So if you just want to multiply numbers and say, I don't know, that's all right. I mean, I, I can't stop you. But certainly what's better is pushing through what is uncomfortable, and that is, I don't understand this. Even though I could get the right answer without understanding it, I'm going to push myself beyond 
what I feel comfortable with at the moment and uh, become a person who does understand it. Okay? He's not afraid to look at something that's long and complicated and follow it slowly, step by step, to understand everything that's happened. Okay? In this case, what I would do is multiply both sides by x because I'm taking advantage of when you multiply a fraction by its denominator, it cancels out. So I to multiply this side by x as well. X over one. Now I have 30 <coughs> over 1, so that's 30. Now I have, I'll write it as 6 elevenths x. How would you cancel out the 6 elevenths? What's that? Divide each side by 6 elevenths. Divide each side by 6 elevenths. Can I multiply by 11 sixths? To divide by a fraction to multiply by the reciprocal. And so we got that cross camp. What is that really? We could do exactly what that example 163 says and just multiply the fraction straight across. We get 66 over 66 is 1 times x. On this side, we multiply by 11 over 6. What? So we look at 6. Oh, I'm sorry. 6 divides 30. 5 times, 11 times 5, 55. Okay, so we must move on. Um, all right, so our gluten-free pancake recipe, which is something my household cooks a lot. Is that like a legitimate recipe? It, yeah, it would be if you could read it. It well, is. Can, like, well, yeah, but like, do you have a bigger of that? Because I'm very one gluten one. intolerant. Really? My wife is as well. You totally can get a warm pancake. <laughs> so, one cup of buckwheat flour to eight pancakes. How are we going to get 12 pancakes? Mm. Jesse? You do one over eight yep. uh, equals x over 12. I'm so sorry. And then do what? Salt bread. Uh, multiply by 12. Uh, multiply by 12? Uh, OK, auto props are not a license to make lots of noise. I hope you see that I care about Okay? That's why I do everything that I do. And when you're doing that, you know what? it makes it difficult oh to be the only one who cares. Oh yes? And 12 over 8 equals x. And 12 over 8 equals x, and we can simplify that a little bit. Uh, 3 over 2. Okay. One and a half cups of flour, of buckwheat flour. Okay, so it's 12 equals 1.5 cups, right? 12 equals 1.5 cups? Yeah, um, actually 1.5 cups. To get 12 pancakes, you need a cup of Oh, what's that? Is this name Shane? Yes. Um, he was great at covering. Are you just laughing at it? Yeah, he did. I was great at All right, we'll get it fixed. too. <laughs> All right, let's solve for X, please. We are going to have homework. I don't know if you think that by wasting everyone's time by talking so much and delaying when we get finished that you're not going to have to learn something new. You're incorrect. So let's keep going. Yep. This is your property. It's 6X plus 3B equals 24. Yes. And then I took minus 3B on each side. So 6X equals 24 minus 3B. And? I divide by uh, yeah, I divide by 6. Divide by 6. Cancel out that 6 by dividing by 6. x equals 24 minus 3b over 6. Or if you want, you don't have to, but if you want, 24 divided by 6 is 4. 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. So 4 minus 1 half, 8. I don't know. OK? Wait, what was that That was either 24 minus 3b over 6. Or four minus one half b. All right, we'll just go ahead and run through this real quick. Make sure you get all the x's on one side together. Add four to both sides. Make sure you don't do something like um, like this. Six x minus uh, minus four equals four x plus eight. Add four, get six x equals four x plus twelve, and then divide by six. 
That's no good. Because then I get x equals 4x plus 12 over 6. To figure out what x is, I would have to plug in x. And that's the whole point. I want to know what x is worth. Okay. This is true, but it's not solved. It's not solved for x. So x is 6. All right, let's turn it all in. I'm going to skip all of this. Yes? Here you go, Sam. The answer for 5, mm -hmm. I didn't see it completely because I was looking over this. The answer Can I for see it? 5 oh, sorry. is... I just want to make sure. Is this 5? Oh, that's 5. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Either one of these is fine. Oh. Three. Three. Yeah, could you put it in my face? Let's get this pass in. Pass it in, please. Here you go, Maximus. Questions real quick. What questions could we ask about this picture? Um, which one could you use to get the better value? What's the better value? That's that's a good question. Dimitri, which one's the better value? It depends. Yeah. Depend, yeah. Depends. Depends. Yeah. Always it depends on the price. There's not just it depends on the price. Yeah. Okay, how about this price? Uh, well, if, it's, if it's below 100. Wait, may. Uh, there it is. How about this price? 20%. 20% not $20? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the question is, really, it comes down to, oh, boy. It comes down to, guys, what is, 20% of 139.99. Okay, I, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know. I'm sure a lot of you know. I just want to explain what a percent is. Okay? It's, a, it's the part compared to the whole. Right? 20% of 139.99 is some piece of. 139.99, right? Yeah. Some piece of it. Okay. Well, the ratio of that piece to the whole piece, the whole thing, the whole price, is equal to 20 per 100. Yes. You guys have seen this before? Yeah. 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 20 per 100. When I say per 100, for 100, you know what word means 100? Cent. Oh, yeah. Century. Oh, like century, centurion, cent, like the cent of a dollar, right? 100 cents in a dollar. Okay? So, some x to 139.99 is equal to, I don't know why I'm writing this again, is equal to 20 over 100. How would you solve this equation? Dimitri? I would solve it. Um, I don't know if it's the right way, but 20 times on 139.99 divided by 100. Fine. That's how it, yeah. Oh, you would multiply both sides by 139.99? No. Yeah, but basically. Yeah. Okay. And then divided by 100. So, x equals 20 times 139.99 over 100. Or, X equals 20 over 100 times 139.99. Would that have to be over 100 too? Would this have to be over 100? Yeah. You're thinking of adding, adding fractions. If I put this over 100 and I multiply it through, I'd get 100 times 100. It would be 10,000. Right? Like that's over 1, that's like this and this. 
the same. Whenever I solve these kind of problems, what I do is um, uh, divide. One is supposed to be 139 times uh, 99. I divide that by 110 no, times 20. No. Yep. Yeah. That's the same thing as this. Yeah. 139 yeah. divided by 100 yeah. times 20. Same thing. When we say, so you guys are going to. I don't know what you think you're gaining by not paying attention, but you're not gaining, you're losing, okay? So, what it means to say, what is 20% of 139 is to say, what piece of 139 is the same as 20 pieces to 100 pieces? It's setting up a proportion. And we just need to solve that proportion. So any percent problem is about by like setting up a proportion where one side of it is something to 100, and solving for x. Okay. So what if I wanted to find, um, let's see, what uh, percent is is thirty of uh, seven hundred and twenty-six? Set up the proportion. Then we're going to use a proportion to our advantage and set this little. Do the same thing, Drew. Uh, 30 over 726 yep. equals yep. x over 100. Right, and we want to know the part of 100. Not, not the part of the whole, we know the part of the whole. We want to know what's the part of 100. So we solve for x by multiplying by 100 on both sides. Um. So we got 100 times 30 over 726. Or 30 divided by 720. Who's, who's used to doing this? 7, or 30 divided by 726, right? Can you get some decimal? Yeah. You ever no. do that? Yeah. 30 divided by 726. Yeah. And then you multiply by 100. Move the decimal place over twice. Yeah. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. What? You're staying for a little bit? You're staying for a little bit? I like